for example, Philippians 4.19. And we tell, say that word to ourselves all the time. And my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There are several scriptures in the Bible that talks about God's provision. Psalm 23 and verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's because we know, we have that confidence in God himself. We have that confidence in him that he will supply all our needs, that he is the good shepherd. We have that confidence in him and that leads us, that confidence leads us to believe his word. Hallelujah. So faith is very, very important. But now a question arises, why is faith necessary? Why do we have to have faith? Why is faith necessary? Firstly, faith is necessary because according to the scriptures, without faith, you cannot please God. Without faith, you cannot please God. If we look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, and it is impossible. It is impossible to please God without faith anyone who comes to god or who wants to come to him must believe that god exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him so when you come to god you must believe that god exists so for you to have our Keep taking us back to that definition of faith. That I simple that definition God of exists, faith that I said. The and that he rewards those in who God sin that leads us to believe seek him. his word. Now, so when you come to if God, if you don't believe you that must exists, believe that God can you deal with him? I mean, so how for you, you to have with how in keep taking us God, back to that definition if you don't of faith, faith that if you don't if you don't believe he exists. So the first step in faith is that you believe that God exists, that there is a God. Paul had an encounter with God on the way to Damascus. So nobody could convince him otherwise. And every time I study that part of Acts so of Apostles the first where um, Paul encountered Christ, I, I, the Holy Spirit always lead me to believe that I'm, that is not the first time God has been trying to reach out to Paul, but he just didn't listen. He had to have a special encounter for him to believe. So that encounter alone convinced him that ha, there is God. And it led him to now go and learn about this God. The one whose people he had been persecuting before that encounter on the way to Damascus when he was still Saul. He was persecuting the, the, the church. And when his name came to Paul, he went to look for God. He went to learn about God. And God taught him because he knew that God, he had an encounter with God. So he knew that God exists. It's not that he saw Christ, but he heard the voice. He didn't see him physically. So how can you deal with an invisible God when you don't believe in his existence, when you don't have faith in his existence. So it is, faith is necessary because without it, you cannot please God. And the Bible also tells us that anyone that wants to come to God must first believe that he exists. That is the first thing you need to do. Do you believe that God exists? Yes, I believe that God exists. I, Olubumi, believe that God exists because there I've had experiences with him that have convinced me beyond reasonable doubt that God exists. I believe that God exists. So the Bible says that you must believe that God exists and that he is a rewarder of them that sincerely seek him. 
diligently seeking in the king james version it says those that diligently seeking that he rewards those that diligently seeking when we say something is diligent that is you seeking you do it day in day out day in day out every day that is what you do so faith is necessary because without it you cannot please god you must believe he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently or sincerely seek him so if you sincerely seek god you know that he exists and you sincerely seek him in his word how do you seek god through his word you don't seek god by going to prophets to pray for you and lay hands on you no you seek to know god through his word that is the essence of the scriptures he wrote it for our good hallelujah the second reason why faith is necessary is because it is a crucial condition for our salvation I said it already that how can you deal with an invisible God when you don't believe that he exists? So how will you say you are saved? We are saved by faith. Let's look at the book of Acts 15 and verse 31. 16 and verse 31. This was Paul and Silas and they were talking so, so that, how will you um, see warden, prison warden, who was about to kill himself after they prayed and a earthquake happened in the jail and he thought that Paul and Silas had escaped. And they replied to him, they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. So salvation requires you believing in the Lord Jesus, believing that God exists believing that jesus came he died for your sins and he rose again on the third day he came to give you life and give you that life abundantly so you need to believe in the lord jesus so that you can be saved so it's a crucial condition for salvation believe in the lord jesus and you'll be saved that it was as simple as that salvation is as simple as that believe in the lord jesus accept him as your personal lord and savior and you're saved so faith is necessary that is faith is believing in the lord jesus faith is believing in god if you believe in god even without seeing him then you have faith so when you believe in God, you are saved. When you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. So faith is a crucial condition for salvation. Faith is also necessary for healing. It is necessary for our sanctification. I taught that last week and two weeks ago. The baptism of the Holy Spirit you also receive by faith. Now, while on the reason why i said faith is necessary for healing i intentionally touched on that word healing most of the people that jesus encountered while he was on earth those that he healed or he helped them to solve their problem he was looking for faith in them and we'll go through a few examples of such people. Jesus went, was looking for faith in them. He was moved to act because of their faith. Let's look at the Syrophoenician woman in the book of Mark chapter seven, verse 25 to 29, quickly. This, is, this woman is described as a Gentile. And then she approached Jesus. She said, Mark chapter 7 from verse 25. Right away, a woman who had heard about him came and fell at his feet. 
a little girl was possessed by an evil spirit and she begged him to cast out the demon from her daughter since she was a gentile born in the syrian phoenicia jesus told her first i should feed the children that is my own family the jews it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs verse 28 she replied him that's true lord <clears throat> But even the dogs under the table are allowed to eat the scraps from the children's plates. And Jesus said, good answer. Now go home for the demon has left your daughter. So that woman had persevering faith. This um, Syrophoenician woman had persevering faith. And she got what she wanted. <laughs> she told Jesus. And when Jesus said, let me first feed my children. Let me first feed the Jews, children of the house. And I, I, I cannot give the food that is meant for um, children to dogs. She said, I accept I'm a dog. She humbled herself, but she persevered. I, I accept I'm a dog. I'm a gentile. I'm not a Jew. But even dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the children's plates. And Jesus knew that this is great faith. So Jesus wanted to see faith in her. He was moved to act on her behalf by her faith. He saw that he had um, persevering faith. The second example I want us to look at is the centurion man in the book of Matthew chapter eight and verse eight to 10. We'll just read verses eight to 10 quickly this man spoke to jesus he said but the officer said lord i am not worthy to have you come into my home just say the word from where you are and my servants will he will be healed i know this because i am under the authority of my superior officers and i have authority over my soldiers as well i only need to say go and they go or come and they come and if i say to my slaves do these they do it when jesus heard this he was amazed turning to those who were following him he said i tell you the truth i haven't seen faith like these in all israel so the centurion man knew that he was also, he is also a man under authority a roman soldier a roman officer he knew that if he says to his officers, they go. If he says, come, they come. So he knows that Jesus just had to give the command. Jesus was looking for faith in him. And he was moved to act on his behalf by his faith. He said he has not seen such a faith in the whole of Israel. Wow. And the last example we are going to look at is the man blind Bartimaeus. In the book of Mark chapter 10, from verse... Um, 47 to 52. Mark chapter 10, we're going to read from verse 47 to 52. Now, when Bartimaeus, it was a blind beggar named Bartimaeus. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet. Many of the people yelled at him, but he only shouted louder. That alone, the fact that he shouted louder got Jesus' attention. He said, he shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. He told his people, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man, cheer up. They said, come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat. He jumped up. He was so excited and came to Jesus. Then Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Hmm. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go for your faith has healed you. Instantly, he received his sight and he followed Jesus down the road. 
Jesus was so moved by his faith. He saw that this man, uh, 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 the centurion, exhibited humble faith. But blind Bartimaeus and Jesus said, Show go earnest faith for your as faith. He was so expectant. Has healed you. He was Instantly, shouting. The moment he, he heard that Jesus was in town and he followed Jesus. He said, Ha, ah, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. People told him, Mr. Man, keep quiet. Don't let us, don't, don't disturb Jesus. He's busy with people that really need his attention. Ha. The man thought, I also need his attention. Jesus, he shouted louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Have pity on me. And then when Jesus called him to come, he quickly dropped his jacket, he dropped his coat, he dropped anything that could disturb him. And he went to Jesus. And when Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He's a blind man, a beggar for that matter. He could have just asked for money from Jesus. Or he could have just asked for food. He could have just asked for clothes or something. But he went for the utmost. He went for heaven's best. He wanted to, he asked for his sight back. He knew that when he has his sight, he will have every other thing. He doesn't need to beg for harms anymore. He doesn't need to do, he wanted to rewrite his own history by having faith. He believed, he showed earnest faith and he received a sign. My question for you today is this. If Christ were to ask you exactly the same question that he had asked the um, blind Bartimaeus, he doesn't need to be, he wanted to be with his own history, history by you right now, having faith. And he has to that he believed. He showed earnest faith. That need that you have, are you believing God for it to be met or you are believing that brother so, 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 or sister so, so, so will help you, your brother or your boss or someone else will help you? Are you really trusting in God? Are you trusting in God? So this is the start of our faith series. Go and ponder on my question tonight. If Jesus were standing before you right now, Will he find faith in you over that situation, over that circumstance that you're going through? Will Jesus find faith in you? Till you hear my voice again next week, Wednesday, same time, 7 p.m. South African time. Stay blessed, stay safe, and know that Jesus is Lord. Bye.